Flipped Classroom video for Maths A2 Unit 3, Harmonic Form. Harmonic Form is about combining sine and cos. In many situations we may need to combine a sine and a cos function and we'll have a look at y equals sine x plus cos x to see what might be a surprising result. So there are the graphs of these functions. We've got sine x in green and cos x in red. And when we add them up, we get another curve, so sine x plus cos x, obviously, but that looks very much like a sine or cos curve, which might be surprising to you, might not. Now, we'll have a look at a clip showing the change in graph of y equals a sine x plus cos x, and we're going to vary a from minus 5 to plus 5. and the sum of them is in blue and we notice it moving along, we notice its magnitude changing the maximums move and minimums move along so they're now moving quite rapidly to the left and up it goes again but the point is that whatever the value of capital A as we changed it what we were getting by adding them up was another function with the same shape as sine or cos. It was magnified for sure, but it was basically the same shape. So, changing the value of the coefficient of sine x appears to leave us with a sine curve, albeit with changing amplitude, and that's how big the peaks are and troughs, and phase shifting means essentially how far from x equals 0 or x equals pi by 2 the peaks and troughs are. OK, so combining them. If we look at a general form, if we say that y is equal to something times sine x plus something times cos x, it seems that this gives us a single sine or cosine function. But it does look like the amplitude and the phase are changing. So what we'll do is we'll say that y is also equal to something r times sine of x plus something. So the plus something, of course, from graph transformations, that shifts that sine function, alpha to the left, in fact, and r magnifies it by stretching it by r in the y direction. Now, we know from work we've done on compound angles, we know that r sine of x plus alpha is r times sine x cos alpha plus cos x sine alpha. And that means that since we are saying that these two functions of y are the same, we can say that a sine x plus b cos x is the same as r sine x cos alpha plus r cos x sine alpha. That's opening up the bracket, of course, from the line above. And just to reiterate, the left-hand side of that is the first version of our y equals, and the right-hand side is that second version. Now the colours we have here within that formula are useful because the sine x on the left hand side is times by a and on the right hand side is times by r cos alpha. For cos x on the left hand side it's multiplied by b and on the right hand side by r sine alpha. And because this is an equivalence, so it's true for all values of x, then those constants must match. If we then divide b by a, we get r sine alpha over r cos alpha, and that is tan alpha. And that means the angle alpha, the phase shift, is going to be tan to the minus 1 of b over a. We also may notice, and this is rather lovely, that if we square a and square b, we get a squared plus b squared is r cos alpha squared plus r sine alpha squared. That is r squared times cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha. And that is, of course, r squared because cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is always 1. So this is neat because we've now got expressions for alpha and for r in terms of our a and b. So if we're given an expression which is y equals something times sine plus something times cos, 
we can turn it into a sine function. Let's have a look at uh, how this works and we may as well use sine x plus cos x which we looked at at the beginning of this video. What do we get for that function? Well sine x plus cos x is r sine x plus alpha and we expand that out r sine x cos alpha plus r cos x sine alpha that means that because the coefficients of sine x and cos x on the left hand side are both 1, so that's our capital A and capital B from before, they're both equal to 1, then we have r sine alpha is 1 and r cos alpha is 1, that means tan alpha is 1 and alpha is pi over 4. We also have that r is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared which is the square root of 2. That means that y is equal to root 2 sine of x plus pi by 4. And now if we take a clip from that graph we saw before we can see that that makes sense. We do indeed have a height of about 1.4 root 2 is 1.41 1 roughly so the magnitude of root 2 sounds about right. Also the sine curve goes through 0 normally but we have sine of x plus pi by 4 from our knowledge of graph transformations, that means we need to move an ordinary sine graph, just straight sine x, pi by 4 to the left. We haven't got a scale on the bottom there, but I can assure you that that is a distance of pi by 4, that the blue curve has moved to the left from 0. And underlining the root 2 and showing you it on the graph, and there is our pi by 4 and that shows you on the graph as well. So I should have clicked them as I was talking, but it's nice to reiterate them post hoc, as it were. Moving on, solving equations with harmonic form. Find all the values in the range phi from 0 to 360, which satisfy 12 cos phi minus 4 sine phi equals 7. This could come from some sort of experiment involving some sort of waves. Step 1, find the harmonic form. Well, 12 cos phi minus 4 sine phi equals r cos phi plus alpha. And notice we have four different forms for this, because we've got these four different formulae. And notice that two of them have a minus in the middle, and that's cos alpha plus beta or sine alpha minus beta. Two of them have a plus in the middle, cos alpha minus beta and sine alpha plus beta. And it's entirely up to you which you choose for these. But very often people choose cos alpha plus beta when there's a minus in the middle and sine alpha plus beta when there's a plus in the middle because that avoids having minuses in the cos alpha plus beta or sine alpha plus beta. Really doesn't matter. As long as you're careful, it'll all shake down right anyway. Let's expand our cos phi plus alpha then. We have r cos phi cos alpha minus r sine phi sine alpha. The r sine alpha therefore matches with the 4 and the r cos alpha matches with the 12. The reason I write them that way up, because I in a way was doing a funny thing starting with the, the right hand part, of the, i.e. the sine phi, but that's because I like to have them stacked up like that so I've got my sine over cos, gives me tan, so it reduces the risk of mistakes tan alpha is 4 over 12, which means that alpha is tan to the minus 1 over 3rd, which is roughly 18.43 degrees. And remember, you would always have to think about accuracy in this, particularly if it were from in a modelling or real type situation, because you are losing accuracy slightly. We also have, of course, that r squared is 12 squared plus 4 squared, so that means r squared is 160, and r is the square root of 160, which is 4 root 10 or whatever it is. Now we can solve this using harmonic form. We can now say that instead of 12 cos phi minus 4 sine phi equals 7 we have root 160 cos of 5 plus 18.43 equals 7. We can divide through by root 160 and we can do cos the minus 1 of that that gives us 56.40. Notice I never even worked out the root 160 in the end because when it came to it, it was going to go into a calculator. So we don't care too much what its actual value was. Now, 
we are dealing with angles between 0 and 360 because we've got this plus 18 we're actually dealing with angles between 18 and 378 doesn't matter too much but it's good practice to always think about the range of angles that you are looking at we'll do a cos curve we'll pop lines in at 18 and 378 just so we don't mess it up we know that we're looking for angles across there so we've got the 56 and we've got the 360 minus 56 as I've said before you might use cast for this or you might just know having practiced a lot how to do it and get your 360 minus 56 in anyway doesn't matter always good to check with the sketch I think 5 plus 18.43 is there for 56.40 or 303.60 Take away the 18.43 and we have phi equals 37.97 or 285.17. We can of course check that if we pop that into our original equation. Always good to go back to the original equation. 12 cos 37.97 minus 4 sine 37.97 gives us 6.999 which is close enough to 7 for me to feel very happy. Now, maximum and minimum values with harmonic form. This is quite nice as well. Find the maximum and minimum values for the following functions, 4x between 0 and 360. So you'll notice they're involving the same function. One is the reciprocal of the other. So we have 5 sine x minus 4 cos x plus 7, and we have 1 over 5 sine x minus 4 cos x plus 7. Okay. The way we do this is obviously we're using harmonic form, it says so at the top, and that's what this video is about. So 5 sine x minus 4 cos x is our sine x minus alpha. We expand that out, we do our r sine alpha is 4 and our r cos alpha is 5. We then do the tan of alpha is 4 fifths, that means alpha is tan of the minus 1 of 4 fifths, which is 38.66 r squared is 5 squared plus 4 squared, that's 41, so r is root 41. Now, if we call that f of x to save writing, we've got f of x is root 41 sine of x minus 38.66 plus 7. Now, being very lazy and using a maximum little scribble of a graph, the maximum value of f of x would be when sine of x minus 38.66 is equal to 1. That's going to maximise this, isn't it? Because we've got root 41 times that, the maximum value we can have for sine is 1, and therefore that's what we need. And that means the maximum value must be root 41 plus 7. We don't even need to know what x is. It doesn't say find what values of x give us the maximum values or minimums. It says find the maximum or minimum values. So that means the maximum value of f of x is root 41 plus 7, which is about 13.4 the minimum value will come when the sign there is minus 1. So that means the minimum value for f of x is going to be minus root 41 plus 7, which is 0 0.60. If we call the reciprocal g of x, then the maximum for g of x will come when we have the minimum for f of x, because it's 1 over or the reciprocal, so the maximum value of g of x is going to be 1 over 0 0.6, which is about 1.68, and that looks different from what we might expect because the calculator is still carrying lots more decimals there, and the minimum for g of x will come when we get the maximum of f of x, so that's going to be 1 over 13.4, which is about 0 0.075. And we can see a graph of that here. There is in purple that is oh I've color coded that nicely I've done the writing in purple and the graph in purple well done me and we can see the maximum and minimum there for each of those graphs and also the angle involved not that we care about the angle involved because it was only the values that were asked for oh and there it says we're not asked for the angles to give these results since the sine function has a maximum and a minimum in the range 0 to 360, so will sine of x minus 38.66. And we do need to at least consider this. But they certainly do have those maximums and minimums in the range that we're looking at.